Meanwhile, Provian and the Council of Mages are having an argument about war and equal rights and shit. You'd think the start of a civil war would be somewhat exciting, but even Jeremy Irons overacting can't save this scene. I ask you one last time. Will you submit to the ruling of this council and relinquish your scepter? I was praying that you would find the wisdom to see that the path I propose for Izmir is the right one. When she did American Beauty, she did know how to, you know, emote, right? Or did I imagine that? Elsewhere, our losers have brought the injured Ridley to the world's largest Christmas tree, where the elves live. Yeah, Lorien it ain't. Thanks to the power of Deus Ex Magica, he is quickly brought back to full strength by an elven healer, played by former Doctor Tom Baker. I just started getting into Doctor Who recently, and out of everything I've seen so far, Tom Baker is by far my favorite Doctor. So to see him slumming it like this is kind of depressing. Tom, you and your ridiculous scarf deserve better. Tom warns them that the Rod of Savril can only cause more harm than good, and they should not disturb it. But we need to keep the plot moving so you know they ain't gonna listen. Then we cut to Marina and Ridley having an argument in front of a green screen. And while the elves took the time to heal Ridley, they apparently couldn't be bothered to wipe the dirt off their faces. I'm not gonna die over some power struggle between a couple greedy mages. No. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong, mage! You never had to live on the other side! Just because some mages are evil does not mean they all are. I'm not! I'm not! The hell was that? Even Ridley was surprised. Check out his reaction. I'm not! Did someone punch her in the kidney in the middle of that line? I, I did, did not understand why she would want commoners to be equal with us. But now? After being with you for only a few days and seeing how you, you always manage to find your way. I understand why the Empress is right. Really? And you're seriously going to use this guy as your benchmark? <laughs> oh my god. I can understand if you don't want to set your standards too high, but this isn't even the bottom of the barrel, honey. This is scraping the mold that's been growing on the shit at the bottom of the barrel. Oh, remember when I said I was saving my comments about the worst line of dialogue in this movie? Well, it's time. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dumbest line of dialogue in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, for a mage. You're pretty smart. Sorry about that. Um, oh. I'll be okay. Let's just move ahead. Oh. So, as expected, our losers ignore the doctor's warning and proceed to the dungeon where the rod is hidden. But a magical barrier prevents everyone but Ridley from entering. Well, how convenient. <laughs> Ridley makes his way into what looks like the cave on Dagobah, but instead of Darth Vader, he finds a trap door! He then finds an ornate door and opens it by placing the Eye of the Dragon in... the Eye of the Dragon. Ridley finds the Rod in the possession of a reject from Pirates of the Caribbean, who warns him that the evil the Rod brings can't be stopped unless the spell is broken. How do I break the spell? That's... you must discover. Fine, keep your secrets. Asshole. Meanwhile, back in the city, the mages are under attack from the Empress Chief CGI Dragons. Jeremy Irons counters the attack by turning his overacting up to 11. Ah, God bless you, Jeremy Irons. Back at the dungeon, Ridley brings the rod to the surface and discovers his companions have been captured. Damodar offers a trade, the rod for his friends. Ridley agrees because, let's face it, at this point he makes Bella Swan look intelligent. You said you'd let them go! No!
Suddenly, Norda and Elwood break free and proceed to beat the crap out of the soldiers. I'm not sure what stopped them from doing that before, but at this point, who cares? Damodar escapes through a portal and Ridley follows him. For some reason, Damodar arrives in the city several minutes before Ridley, I guess it works like the black hole in Star Trek, and he hands the rod to Profian. You said you'd set me free. You're probably expecting him to say something like, I lied. But surprisingly, he gets rid of the magic parasites. He may be an evil, overacting bastard, but at least he's a man of his word. So Profian uses the rod to summon the red dragons. My destiny! Oh god, did we just see his O face? Ridley then shows up to challenge Damodar, and a duel ensues. Ridley then goes after Profian, but the mage proves to be a bit too much for him to handle. Suddenly, the other losers come out of nowhere and attack, but Profian easily swats them away. However, he drops the rod in the process, and Ridley destroys it. The Emperor shows up a second later, and Profian becomes dragon -free. We then transition to the final scene, thank God, where Ridley pays his final respects to his fallen friend. Wait, what? Do not question your gift. Your friend awaits you. Wait. What? Okay, I only have so many wait what's in me. What the fuck is going on? Has Snails been brought back to life? And if so, how? And what's happening to the other losers? Are they being teleported to wherever Snails is? And, and where is that? Is, is he somewhere else in the world, or, or on another plane of existence, or a parallel universe or something? This does not make sense! But in a way, that nonsense we just saw is a fitting end to this clusterfuck of a movie. You see why I had to do this? You see why this movie has been a thorn in my side for the last 10 plus years? I was a young, optimistic kid with such high hopes for this film, and all I got was 107 minutes of fail. Story? Fail. Casting? Fail. Acting? Fail. Directing? Fail. Effects? Fail. Music? Fail. Not pissing off fans of the source material? Epic. Fail. <coughs> For the life of me, I still cannot figure out how this happened. The people behind this movie were allegedly fans of D&D, they had no shortage of source material to draw upon, and they had the backing of a major studio. Unfortunately, it appears they failed their saving throw versus suck. But you know, it felt good to get this off my chest. It really did. This was therapeutic in a way. Thank you for indulging me. Next time, we shall take a look at the wonderful world of video game adaptations. But until then, I am the Smeghead, and Hollywood can suck it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to clean the carpet. I got my 12-sided die, and I'm ready to roll with the wizard and my goblin crew. My friends are coming over to my mom's basement, bringing Funyuns and the Mountain Dew. I got a big broad sword made out of cardboard, and that stereo's a pumpkin zeppelin. It's that time of the night, we turn on the black light, let the dungeons and the dragons begin. It's DNT! Fight with the legends of yore, it's DNT! Kissed a lady before. Nope. I did it. And just to show you how much of a pack rat I am, I still have my Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook that I bought back in 1998, which I am currently holding upside down. Mm -hmm.